This video briefly describes what a mitigation system is for buildings in methane zones. GeoForward is a nationwide provider of environmental engineering and construction services. For more information, please find us online. A methane mitigation plan is a comprehensive design aimed to eliminate the hazards of methane soil gas intrusion into buildings. Structures built above historical oil fields, landfills, or contamination plumes generally require a soil vapor mitigation system to ensure the indoor air quality and safety of occupants. Without a methane mitigation system, toxic and combustible vapors can migrate through a building's foundation and build up to lethal concentrations indoors. In fact, violent explosions and fires have occurred in the past, resulting from subsurface methane gas intrusion. In Los Angeles, these plans are a requirement for projects within special hazard zones. Similarly, other districts of California, Colorado, Texas, and more also require soil vapor mitigation. Typically, these zones are a result of regional petroleum fields, oil drilling sites, natural tar surfacing, and landfilling. The term natural gas means combustible hydrocarbon gas originating from natural biological and geological processes. The formation of natural gas stems from the microbial and thermal decomposition of subsurface organic material. Methane is the largest chemical compound of natural gas by volume. Other common components are ethane, propane, isobutane, and other hydrocarbons. The combustible gas resulting from microbial decomposition is biogenic gas. This type of gas is most identifiable in landfill areas, swamps, marshes, and wetlands. On the other hand, the gas that stems from the thermal decomposition of organic matter underground is petrogenic gas. This is most commonly associated within the oil fields and the tar pit areas. Regardless, both of these gases can exist within high-pressure pockets underground and warrant the use of vapor intrusion mitigation systems. Methane soil gas is highly flammable, odorless, and colorless, so its presence within confining spaces isn't easily detectable by humans. The gas does move through soil, making the path of least resistance. As a result, it has a tendency to rise towards the surface and move into subterranean garages and the first floor buildings. There is an optimal range of concentrations for methane gas to ignite. As a result, methane mitigation systems must be in place to continuously monitor the air and immediately alleviate the risk of an explosion. Job sites within the proximity to oil fields, tar pits, swamplands, and landfills are known to have an abundance of petrogenic and biogenic gases underground, and the presence of this underground combustive gas poses a safety threat. As a result, most government agencies have mapped such areas as special hazard zones. For instance, Los Angeles City publishes a map of high-risk methane zones and methane buffer zones. For your reference, a copy of this map can be seen and downloaded from the GeoForward website. Soil gas surveys or methane tests are a general standard when building in these zones, and site-specific methane mitigation parameters are based on the results of the methane test. There are various levels of methane mitigation. The higher the level, the more comprehensive a mitigation system must be. There are five primary methane design levels in the city of Los Angeles, as well as most other jurisdictions. Typical methane mitigation standards comprise a passive system, an active system, or a combination of both. A complete passive mitigation system includes a series of perforated horizontal ventilation pipes within a network of gravel blankets, an impervious membrane, as well as vertical ventilation risers. Passive ventilation systems are complex engineering projects which intend to block and remove hazardous gas from underneath buildings without the means of a mechanically active system. A passive system relies on the natural rising characteristics of a hydrocarbon gas in order to capture the accumulations underground. The system is strategically set up to naturally direct the gas upwards and around the structure, exhausting it into the atmosphere. Passive systems can also comprise other building components, such as trench dams and the use of sealed conduits and gas-tight pipe fittings. Trench dams block the intrusion of methane gas through utility trenches, and conduit seals prevent the passage of hazardous gas within the utility lines themselves. An active mitigation system includes earth pressure sensors below the impervious membrane of a structure, as well as a mechanical extraction system, indoor ventilation system, and a gas detection or alarm system. Active methane mitigation systems comprise electrical and mechanical designs for optimal air extraction. Typically, the systems operate using vacuum blowers, pumps, 
fans, sensors, and a control panel. In this process, HVAC systems are synchronized to accelerate indoor ventilation. An active system includes an alarm that warns occupants if dangerous levels of methane occur indoors. Groundwater levels fluctuate throughout time. Variations in the groundwater levels are based on local environmental impacts, climate changes, and nearby human activity. When the bottom of the subterranean structure supersedes the depths of the groundwater, the methane mitigation system and overall lowest occupied space of a building are at risk of flooding and failure. As a result, the infiltration of groundwater as well as hazardous methane soil gas compromise the structure. In such cases, there is a strict requirement for a dewatering system. A dewatering system lowers the groundwater table to a safer elevation with respect to subterranean space and methane mitigation system. Additionally, special waterproofing applications prevent groundwater from passing through a methane vapor barrier. Ultimately, dewatering and waterproofing systems are designed in accordance with methane mitigation systems when necessary. Suspiciously low-cost methane mitigation plants are usually performed below the professional standard of care. Low-budget plans restrict an engineer's ability to properly design a functional system. Equally as important, low-cost construction services are also likely to include shortcuts and improper substitutions with cheaper materials. Most of all, low-budget work relates to a higher risk of failure and damage to the occupants. Secondarily, the ramifications of dealing with failure could cost a fortune in legal fees and redevelopment costs, so best practices suggest avoiding low-budget work. This video is brought to you by GeoForward. You can find us online for more information about environmental engineering reports and other related services.